Hey, welcome to another morning coffee with Trevor. Thanks for joining again. Lots of great conversations over uh, the week. And uh, I really enjoyed talking about the different ways to help develop your skills to help others. I think that's, that's really one of my passions. If I can help you a bit more to be able to share your knowledge, uh, feel comfortable sharing with it and really helping others. I really believe sharing your knowledge, you're learning it twice, right? Whatever knowledge it is, you know, if it's about refrigeration topics, if it's training an apprentice or working with a, a design group or a sales group, it doesn't really matter. It's, uh, you know, you're learning something and then you share it. And it, it's uh, really, really important to do that because then it'll make you dive a little bit deeper to make sure that you're talking about the, that topic in the right way and you'll gather more resources and get better ideas. And, uh, um, and I just really appreciate everybody taking the time to, to be here with you. Hey, Victor, how you doing, brother? Hi, Trevor. Good morning. How are you? And I'm real good. Man, you've been consistent and persistent, but I've seen you here almost every day. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm here because, um, you know, um, through the years, like you said, in the beginning, it was very hard to get the information. We have to, to travel to, from Aruba to the States or to, to whatever to, to, to get training. And that costs a lot of money. And uh, um, yes. And uh, the, the other thing is um, people get used to do things and that's, that's a problem. And uh, I do this um, every time because refreshing and refrigeration is the best thing that ever happens. So you have to keep, if you have one line to follow, you have to keep on that line. If, if as soon as you go from that line, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, <laughs> you, you have a good point. You got to continue to learn and, uh, and definitely trying to make it easier for other people just to think differently. I think that's one of the big things is that um, you can. When, when I did, when I did um, the advanced um, compressor service seminar from Amazon at uh, um, Penn State University and, and State College, and there was an old guy there. I'm I'm not young, but uh, there was a guy that was older than me, and. Uh, he told me um, in the first break, because I smoke, I go outside and smoke and we spoke. So he told me, I don't know what I came to do in here because, because um, those things I know, I know already. And I told him this afternoon, when we come out smoke, you will tell me something different. It's, it's because, um, like I tell you, if you have one line to follow and you go from that line, and you see um, that you do something wrong, you have to get back, uh, get back to that line. And he, he told me I was right. <laughs> you know, the things that I was, I was doing wrong. So and that's great, a great conversation with him. Yeah, <laughs> and I've had that, uh, that, that conversation quite a bit. And I had the pleasure of helping build um, the cost program for uh, Canada and, uh, and being involved in compressor trainings. And I was the same, same way. Like I, I would think, you know, okay, you've taken a program or I've taken a program. You don't need to take it again, but I've learned over the years that if you don't uh, stick at it, you forget stuff. I've been yeah, doing that a lot lately. And every time you do a training, it doesn't matter what it is. You're going to pick something new up because every time I do a training, I'm learning something new from, the technicians or the the refrigeration professionals in there and if 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 you see almost all training um if, if it is from uh manufacturer like uh, amazon the first thing they bring you back is to the basic you will start from the basic and widen yeah. up on it yeah a lot of people even myself that there's times that i've you know had a 
check myself, you know what I mean? Because going back to the basics is so important. And that's with troubleshooting for sure. It's like a lot of the times I've seen myself out there where I'm all, I was thinking it's this complex problem and it has to be, you know what I mean? It's so complex, but no, it's, you know, the drain was plugged, you know, or an easy thing that maybe it's not the drain plug, but it was something very simple to look at. Maybe it's a loose wire or something um, that really wasn't that complex but put more stress on myself to make it think it's really hard. And then it takes just a lot longer um, to fix that problem. <laughs> and, and the other thing, uh, uh, if you see right now, um, refrigeration didn't change. The principle remained the same. Technology changed around it. So we have to get to know the technology around it that changed. And yeah. That's that's um, my point. My point of view. I learn a lot uh, from components. Um, I was in in um, like Sporland in in Washington, Missouri. We did uh, uh, um, the the specialist training, and for me, it's important to know. Um, component and know how they work, what they're supposed to do. And then you can come with a logic when you're troubleshooting. So um, it's supposed to do this. It's not doing it. What was the problem? <laughs> yeah. And that's great that I hear you doing all these different trainings and you continue to want to do them. And yeah. the funny part is when you just said that, you know, that um, it doesn't change. Refrigeration doesn't change. Lowell in the chat was like, you know, I realize that fundamentals do not change and that's what it is. That's, yeah. You know, it's just getting back to those basics and getting back to that understanding of um, refrigeration. And when you understand the basics and you have a true grasp of it, because it took me a long time, to be honest, you know, people told me the basics and I reviewed the basics and you went over and over and over and over again. But it wasn't until, you know, you, you really grasp until I could start seeing inside those pipes to really understand what's going on and, and like that latent change. And what does that really mean? Like, I, I, I know it's a change of state, you know what I mean? But when you really grasp the concept, that's when you start to develop yourself more and you still need to continue to uh, train and learn and, and educate and relearn stuff because that's, yeah. that's where people, I, I believe, start to fall off is like, well, I already took that course or I already took that training. I don't need to take it again. Well, maybe you may be right. Maybe you've taken that training. You don't have to take it again, but I know for sure I've done in the last three years on, on some development trainings, trying to learn how to build marketing, how to build uh, sales funnels, how to be more service to the industry. And I'm reviewing those trainings. I go back and I'm watching the same videos that I watched three or four times to really understand the concept or talking to someone about it and trying to understand it. And it's no different in refrigeration. You have new concepts that come out. You need to learn about them. You were at the Sporlin uh, factory and you did their training. And I hear it's an amazing down there. They have so many different components and they work differently. But even though you become really good at working on one of their electronic controllers, you know, you get their subcooler controller or Calvin 2 controller, there's a lot of parameters in there and it takes some time to understand it. If you don't work on that in a couple, you know, a couple of years, you may have to go back and, and review and maybe do a follow-up training. And it doesn't really matter where it's at in the industry. You need to continue to learn and grow. And sometimes it's relearning stuff you already know, you know, because yeah. uh, I said it, I think four, three or four days ago, I was going through my notes and I did like a gas fitter course and I, you know, a fully licensed gas fitter and I'm reading through the books and I, I don't even remember writing all those notes. And I mean, it's perfect. Like, I'm like, this is gold. Like this stuff, I should just give this to another someone up and comer and just read this book and you'll be able to, you know, get by. You still need to do the code books and all that other stuff. But like my notes were just so detailed and I'm like, I don't remember this stuff because it's been so long since I touched on it and, and uh, learned about it, you know? So it's, it's uh, ref for me, it's refreshing to get back into uh, somewhere that, you know, it's knowledge that I already have experience with, but it's to ask those questions as well with that expert. Like when you're at that uh, Copeland course, you know, you're there and you knew a lot of the stuff is, but asking that one specific question, maybe during that training, and that's what you learn, you know, yeah. and that can be invaluable to you because uh, like, this is what people uh, I try to get to understand you. When I go to a course, I'm looking to 
learn one or two things that I can implement into my like daily practices. And if I could do that, it doesn't matter if the course is $5,000 for a day. If I could take something that I can implement into my life that I can implement for the next 20 years, you think that is worth more than 5,000? Know, for sure, I'm going to be paid back over and over and over again. And that's where it's, you kind of got to open your mindset up, you know, and think about that stuff because it's like, wow, because a few years ago, I would never pay like four or $5,000 to go to a one day seminar, you know, but now it's, I, I do it. I, for last year, I've done it many times, uh, yeah. you know, just to develop myself and learning from the experts because I didn't realize like, I'm reading this book or I read this book multiple times. It's called Mastery by Robert Greene. I actually have it here. But he talks about the apprenticeship uh, model and how, how it works and how you need to get the idea of you know, learning the skill of, of whatever the trade is. You know what I mean? And then working towards becoming a master at it. And, you know, he talks about 10,000 hours. And there's lots of people that say, OK, it takes 10,000 hours to master some, something. But if you have the right trainer, right mentor, right coach, it's not going to take you 10,000 uh, hours to, to master. It's going to take you 10,000 hours to keep it all and grow and get better and have those new ideas and creatively think and to, you know, expand on it, you know, maybe develop new theories on it and how to, you know, explore different uh, options. But you can reduce that time down for sure this day and age. Yes, 10,000 hours when you're working with one person who's originally building it and learning it and, Yes. And they say 10,000 hours because a lot of times people aren't just focused on that. They're focused on a lot of things. If you're focused 10,000 hours straight, constantly doing that, yes, you're going to, you should become better. But if you're focused for those 10,000 hours, just doing the same thing, same thing day in, day out, just for an example, you're just changing belts and filters on a maintenance and that's all you do. Well, you are going to be a master at changing belts and filters. You're a master at that but you're not a master at, you know, say commissioning a system or troubleshooting a system. So that's what you need to realize. And, and that's one of the things that in a refrigeration, you need to learn different aspects. You want to be a master at troubleshooting ice machines. Well, you got to be working on them all the time. I've worked on tons and tons of ice machines and I am no master. <laughs> I'm working on them. I got to go back and What's the harvest cycle then? How does it work? When does it start? When does it stop? So it's the things that if you want to master something, you do need to spend that time and work on it and develop those skills. But finding the right mentors can reduce that time and the proper training and education can reduce that time a lot. But you still got to continue to develop those skills. Just like you said, Victor, you'll go out and you'll take these courses again and you'll relearn and you, you're here, you know, you're just here to have a conversation and listen and learn a bit more. Hopefully I can share something with you and hopefully you get some knowledge just like everybody else. And, and that's my whole goal. If I can share one or two tips with you over the, over these 30 days, we're on day 17 already, but if I can share one or two tips that you spend uh, and you can use that in your daily life or share with someone or help somebody else out, you know, like I'm doing my part and I really want to uh, continue to do stuff like this to give back. Because this industry gave a lot to me. That's how it is, uh, Trevor. Every day we learn something new. So we have to keep doing this. Yeah. Yeah, and I really appreciate it. And uh, I, th I think it's, it's uh, I like to see, and I keep seeing continue the same names come near. I'm hoping you're getting some value from it. And this is called, you know, consistent and being you know, persistent. You know, I'm here sharing some of my knowledge but i see some of you coming every day and it's not easy you guys are some of you are getting up really early you know you have maybe other jobs you need to do um donald just says like he can only get to watch the first 15 minutes and then he has a crew he's got to work with and then he goes watch you now that's starting to build a habit and it doesn't you know for me it doesn't matter if you're coming to here to hang out with me or if you're going to read other uh, refrigeration knowledge or getting education somewhere else i think that's so important i think you need to find the education from different areas because so, so some people like you can say the exact same thing as somebody else but you say it like a, in a different matter manner and you learn a little differently and that helps structure you how you present uh present to other people or talk to other people and and help the growth in others okay how do you know when you have quality quantitative and added value in selective train. 
from our loved ice machine, you can build an algorithm on people and ice usage. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. So how do I know when I have quality, quantitative and uh, added value in selective training? Well, it does take time. You need to, you know, find out and ask people about the training. You know, you got to do your due diligence as well. You got to find out who's, who's doing the, uh, who's presenting the training, who's doing it. How does it come across? You know, I've heard this a lot over the years, uh, especially when I did work uh, with Copeland and I was running their training here in Canada is that I've had a lot of technicians come in and like, Trevor, I've been to a lot of manufacturer trainings before and, you know, 90 Five percent of the time it's a sales training and i thought this was going to be just another sales training but i was blown away by the amount of you know interaction you had in the training and how you you know brought it to my level you know and not made it about selling the the copeland product or selling that and that's what i really uh, pride on is to bring you know um, this experience in the training and that's what i do now with refrigeration mentor trainings i'm trying to make it an experiential learning you know, because it's what you need as a technician, as a service manager, as an operation manager. And, and it's how do I help you get to that next stage, that next level? Because everybody's going to have different needs, you know, and it's you can't always satisfy everyone in, say, one specific training or talk. It just doesn't always happen. But if you have expectations set, and in these courses, if you read and they're very clear on what you are aligned with, what you want to learn and what you, your goals are for that specific training, I think that's where you start. And once again, if you're, you're going to get into the trainings, I'd call either find out someone who has taken the training before, uh, call up the, the training organization and maybe talk to that trainer, you know, or that educator or that professional that is going to be uh, doing the training and find out a bit more if they don't have a lot of detail on say their website. Not sure if that answers your, your question, Lowell, but uh, you do need to do some due diligence and, and just find out about that. A few of the things that I've been um, working on lately, and like I talked about quite a bit about CO2 over the last few days, but I have more and more requests uh, for CO2. And that's one of my main goals is to help teach uh, refrigeration professionals, technicians, service managers, operation manager, business owner, even their end users, because I'll, I'll work with uh, contractors and their end users to talk about CO2. But it's something that is, is coming. And I see, I still see a lot of people shying away from it, saying, oh, well, it's not going to affect us. It's not going to get here, but it's, it's growing and growing more. We're going to see it more on the refrigeration side. And um, I'm building up a, a CO2 program and I'm working on it uh, diligently trying to um, get it ready to, you know, be something that's helpful for all sides of refrigeration that really will make a, a difference and an impact. So technicians are prepared, service managers, operation managers are prepared, business owners are prepared because the big thing is, is, you know, there is a store you take over and then the technician goes out to the store and he's never seen uh, CO2 refrigeration or natural refrigerant. It doesn't really matter. And then he makes a call, phone call to the service manager and the service manager has never seen or, or never dealt with it before. It's important that the chain, somebody along that chain has some experience and they're providing or offering training for their technicians, for their service manager. It's not only the technicians because I've, I've talked to a lot of uh, businesses and I say like, how often do your, your service managers go for training or your operation managers or how long, like your pr project managers, how often are they going to training to upskill, you know, cause it's not all about, you know, the sales training sales guys need to understand uh, uh, P or sorry, sales people need to understand how to do sales and, and, you know, market themselves to sell the business, of course. But what, what I've been seeing year over year is that a lot of the salespeople do not have the refrigeration background, right? They don't have that background to understand what the, the customer is sometimes going through when there's an issue, you know, or what the technician goes through uh, putting that, that product in like a lot of, there's a lot of times and I've talked to so many technicians, service manager, even operation manager where equipment is sold. It's not the right equipment for that, that end user. 
and then it's up to the technician to to get them the you know the the salesperson out of that situation i'm not saying this happens all the time and everywhere but there needs to be communication with inside the organization and i i don't think there's enough of that like i think that there more needs to be like internal communication with not only this uh service manager and the technician but the service managers maybe the sales as well as maybe the project manager and the technicians and combine and talk things out, communicate between them. Like say, yes, we do need sales, but these, these jobs that you're putting out there, these aren't right for the customer. And there's running more and more issues over time. Uh, and as a, as a team collectively, you can come up with probably some of the, the better solutions for your customers. Because I don't think technicians are involved enough and maybe a lot of technicians don't want to be involved in that. They just want to go out and do their day in and day out. But I know some technicians do want to be. They don't. They they want to help that customer, bring the value to their customer. And sometimes they see it. I've asked them. They're like, "This wasn't the right solution for the customer." But they, you know, they didn't speak up and they didn't have those meetings. And I really think that communication is really important. Oh. I didn't check that. Please, how do you develop your communication skills? I'm working towards being a master communicator. Look at this. Adam, thanks for the, the message. So you need to work at it. Communication skills is so important in our industry. And it's something that we should be, it should be in our apprenticeship programs. And I think some of them do it, but I think it's highly re recommended. I think there needs to be more role playing in schools, not just information dump. There needs to be more of this role playing and and getting the those jitters or the uh, you know those butterflies out uh, for communication. There's there's t so many programs online, but the, uh, I said it already. The biggest one that really helped me was a Dale Gar Carnegie course. Real read a few Dale Carnegie books. I have a couple of them up here. You know, um, how to win friends and influence people. The, the other one I have is uh, what stop worrying and start living. I think that's another one that I've read. I've read them a couple of times. I, I do probably need to read them again. Um, it's important to, to learn about that. And once again, maybe it's a, a different course for you. Maybe that's not the course that that's going to help you, but you need to find people that resonate with you and that understand you. That's the big thing, right? So when you ask a question and, and, and then care about what you you're looking for, you know, build that relationship and what you're looking for. So it takes time. And sometimes you, you take a program and, you know, that wasn't really the right program for you, but you got to think, what did you learn from that? That's the big step. What, it doesn't matter if the, it, that training program you were going to turned out to be more of a sales program. You got to think, what did I learn out of that? Okay. And sometimes you don't, maybe you don't learn anything. Maybe, well, you do learn something. It's just something that you didn't maybe want to learn or need to learn. Okay. Now, now that's a t another whole different conversation. But for communication skills, uh, I would say try Toastmasters for wherever you're at. I'm not sure uh, where you're located. That, that's something that's globally. That's something you can go and probably start right away. Um, what else? There's Dale Carnegie is globally. And I'm sure there's lots of other ones. I know, excuse me, Brian Tracy. He's a, more of a motivational speaker and a business, uh, business training organization. But he has a communication um, courses. But once again, if you're, gonna, you're thinking of taking a course, buy, a lot of them have books already out. Buy a book and read the book first and see, well, do I align with the, the values of this communication course? And you're going to have to take lots of them. I've been taking more and more over the years, trying to develop my skills. Uh, and yeah, just try to implement them. That's another thing about trainings that I find that a lot of people don't do and I didn't do either until I'm still continuing learning how to learn but till, until I started to learn a bit better started to really the information that I took and the specific points go through it again like after the course and I, I say that night after you take a program or you're doing a, a session and you do a module whatever it is take some notes afterwards okay I wrote all these notes now what did I get out of all that what were the top things of this, these 45 things I wrote down? What are the top three things? Because you're not going to remember everything. You know, and a lot of times, even myself, is I write down a lot of things and I don't go back to them for a long time. If I even go back to them sometimes, depending on the topic. 
And so I, I really believe if you take the time and then review what you just learned, it's going to help you remember that stuff. So, you know, you take all these notes in the course, but then you take them again. I kind of paraphrase what you learn. And I think that will start to help, you know, remember, remember different things. And it's not all in refrigeration as well as in like personal development. I've seen technicians and salespeople come out of a service call to do a double whammy. I told the customer to have them check the reversing valve solving the problem solved. Customer saved eight thousand dollars. Okay, Lau, well, I've I've actually had a meeting, I say back in December with a large contractor. And they were like, Trevor, one of the things that we need help with is to help our technicians dive a little deeper. They have a lot of technicians, but we need them to dive a little bit deeper because it's embarrassing because what's been happening and they've been tracking this stuff is where technician goes out and says the exact same thing. Uh, compressors failed. You might as well change the whole system. Here's a you know $3,500 to do this replacement. And then a contractor from down the road, they call for a second opinion, come in. Exact same thing you just said. It was just a hot gas valve or it was the reversing valve, you know, a few hundred dollars now. Saved the customer thousands of dollars. And it's embarrassing for them. It's like, can you help, you know, with that? And they have even a training team in, inside their organization. And it's sometimes you can and sometimes it's going to be, it's going to be a longer process. All depends. Are you hiring someone who has never uh, picked up gauges before, you know, and after three months, they're out on their own doing service calls because that's, that's happening out there. There's people going out with no experience at all. And, and it's kind of scary in that sense. It has nothing to do for me with money and making mistakes and it costing the customer a few thousand dollars. What happens if they get hurt out there? You know, cause this is a dangerous, it can be a dangerous uh, skill. You know, we work with electricity, we work with, pressures we work with toxic stuff you know there's a lot of different things in there and you need to work say ladders like working on height and it really doesn't matter in our industry all the like a lot of the trades are have dangers if you don't know how to do it properly and it's no different if even working in an office if you just work in office, there's dangers of working in an office as well so it's uh it's really for me it's that safety factor get uh get the new people I don't say young people anymore because I really think people um, at any age can get into refrigeration and start learning it because there's so many sides of it. You know, you get a base understanding of refrigeration, get those fun fundamentals now down, and then you can go, you know, you could do controls or you can do HVAC, you could do refrigeration, you can do commercial. And from there, you could get into sales or project management or service manager. You know, it's, there's a lot of avenues. And I really believe that we need to talk about the more avenues for technicians, because if you have somebody who's say in, in our industry, who's not really in just doing it for say the money, because, and you know, I'm doing it because I know I can make, I make 80 grand a year and this is what I live on right now. And to make that change, you a lot of times you do need to make a pay cut, take a pay cut. But if you plan and prepare and work towards, you know, your specific goals, you know, you can save that money. So when you do make that transition, you're prepared for it because a lot of times life hits you and you're not prepared for it. You know, if you're not investing or saving, saving some emergency funds, but it takes time. And, you know, I've lived paycheck to paycheck for, for many, 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 many years, even though I was making a pile of money, I was living above my means, you know, spending more than I, than I had taking trips, you know, but when I started to learn uh, how to, you know, save that little bit of money for emergency, you know, making that transition going from a technician to uh, to more of a business development role, it was a big change, you know, <laughs> uh, mentally and financially. But if you start working and planning it, you can, it makes it a lot easier. It's not as uncomfortable, not as scary, not so outside your comfort zone when you plan and prepare. And it's really like a lot of it. A lot of it, everything, I guess. These trainings from Sporl and Copeland are critical and gives credibility to technicians and contractors who will come before and after you. Yeah, for sure. Really, any trainings, um, it doesn't matter if it's manufacturer training, if it's independent training, 
if you can take that training and implement it and show it, you, you can implement it, you're going to be able to get a job anywhere, especially in refrigeration. Because we, everybody's looking for skilled technicians. And I appear time and time again from service. I'm looking for one more skilled guy, Trevor. You know, I'm looking for one, one more technician or one more person who can, who can take a lead role, you know, to help take the 70, 80 hours a week off my top guys, you know, or my, my technicians who are out there working day in and day out. And by investing in yourself, taking more trainings, learning, learning the topics and then implementing those topics, you got to implement it. And it doesn't matter if you keep, you're not able to implement it while you're in the field, figure out ways at home to do it, you know, um, and, and teach yourself, take the time to figure that out. And one thing is I've heard before, uh, well, I'm not that great of a brazer. Well, how, well, how often do you, I don't do it too often. Well, how are you going to become a good brazer if you don't do it often? If you don't practice it? Well, I don't work on systems. I don't know installs. I, I know so many contractors and companies that will help. They would say, okay, here's some tubing, anneal it. Here's some, cut it up, start, anneal it or swedge it or whatever you need to do and practice. They'll pay for that stuff. A lot of these contracts will do that if you want to do it on your own time to learn this stuff. But once again, even like the more meetings I'm having, I keep hearing, well, these guys aren't going to go to training for free. I'm going to have to pay them for the, at the trainings. They're going to have to pay them while they're doing the work after the trainings. And I don't know, really don't know what's going on out there. Like it's the, in the trades, it's, it's, I think it's a different uh, mindset right now. Uh, and really it's more of, that's more of a fixed mindset when you don't want to learn, you need someone to pay you to go do training, to upskill your skills, to get you better that you can take anywhere where it's very, you can go from Canada to Australia with these, these skills, or you can go from, you know, whatever country you're at to another country, because you take those skills with you. It's not like it stays with that company. So need to open up your, you know, your mind a bit more. And it took me many years to be honest. I was in that fixed mindset, you know, and can you change from a fixed mindset to uh, a growth mindset? For sure. There's, it just may take times and may, it maybe you have a bit of a fixed mindset and growth mindset, depending on what you're talking about. But I really believe we need to get uh, the stigma of when, well, you know, I need to be paid every second for training because Every other industry out there, I even talked with my wife about it the other day. She was like, Trevor, I, I wish people would pay me for the amount of training that I've done. I can't imagine. I, you know, that would be there'd be so much saving because there are so many industries that you have to do continuing professional development training to keep your certificates, to keep those going. And that's something in our industry that's not there. And you know, um, maybe I'm I'm growing like I've grown over the years. And I've learned and I think differently that now it's more of my career. How do I get better, grow myself to get better? Because now I can use those skills really anywhere. So, wow, a lot of talking today. Hopefully there's some value in that uh, for you. And uh, once again, let's get a conversation going tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone.